Hey everybody, Stu Smith here going live. Hope you are well on this Monday morning. I, uh, as you guys congregate <clears throat> on here and begin to ask your questions before then, what I will do is going to discuss a little bit about a great question we had last week that I really didn't go into depth with, but I wrote an article on it last week and you can see it in the description. It's up on military.com. And it's basically a simple question about, I have shin splints, I still need to pass a PST mile and a half in uh, the next three weeks, but doctor says I shouldn't run for the next week to two weeks, what should I do? So um, what I did is I put in six days of workouts in, the, in that article. And like Monday and let me see, which one is it? Monday and Wednesday, Monday and Thursday. Anyway, there's two days where you do a bike pyramid, which is every minute on the minute, you increase the resistance of a life cycle type bike that has resistance to it every minute on the minute. And you go for 20 minutes total. So can you go all the way up to level 20? It's pretty good if you can. Uh, if you want, you can go up by two levels every minute and go up to 20 and then back down to two. It's another option. Um, but there's many ways to make that one hard. And it is hard. It typically starts off easy the first five minutes. The middle 10 minutes really suck. Um, and if you keep on going straight for 20, it, the last 10 minutes really suck and you should have a puddle underneath you because the goal is you got to keep your rpms around 70 to 80 rpms on that bike and uh you'll find it very difficult in fact you won't be able to do it sitting down so you're going to have to stand up your heart rate goes up real high and now you're starting to replicate some of the effort that it takes to run fast. And that's really what you want to do. I think a lot of people get on these bikes and just pedal because they can't go running and it's just too easy, right? So you're not really pushing your abilities and getting better or at least maintaining your abilities when you do that. The other bike workout I have was a, a Tabata interval and it's a 20 minute workout as well but it's set up in like um, I think I had it set up as like uh, five minute sets where you do 20 second sprint really hard and then 10 second easy. This doesn't matter what kind of bike you're on. In fact, if you want, you can be on one of those aerodyne bikes and assault bikes, whatever you want to call them. Um, those are really hard with that one, in fact, and it's a really good one to push yourself. You do it for like five minutes, take two minutes easy, then do it again. Five minutes, two minutes easy, five minutes of 20 second sprint, 10 second easy, you know, circuit. That's a, called a Tabata interval. That's a really good way to maintain your cardio base as well. And then the other one is... I like to do on leg days, which you could do both of those on leg days as well if you wanted to. But the other one's actually just a bike ride with legs mixed in. So uh, it's pretty decent pace on a on a bike for five minutes, hop off every five minutes and you do 20 squats and 10 lunges. Um, that's fine if you have shin splints or foot problems maybe, but it's not fine if you have knee tendonitis and it hurts to do squats and lunges. So, you know, it really kind of depends on what is causing you not to be able to run. Um, so those other two are really good with that one. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you can't do squats and lunges, those other two are really uh, get you in that zone. I will say this, uh, my own personal experience with those workouts, uh, Tabata intervals hadn't been created yet at that time. At least I'd never heard of them, but I did do bike pyramids and I did five minutes hard um, squats and lunges once I could do squats, but there was, I had a knee injury. I couldn't run. 
all I could do was just those bike pyramids and I did them every day. And, um, and then I would just go for a ride for like 30 minutes, just kind of cool down, just kind of keep the cardio up. And when I could start doing squats and lunges, which was about three weeks into it, um, I started adding those into the bike pyramids and to the, uh, 30 minute bike rides. I'd hop off every five minutes and hit the, uh, hit the squats and lunges. And I did that for another couple of weeks. And when I was able to get back into running again, I was actually faster when I went back into training. And that was, that was awesome. Um, so you can be faster, you can maintain, uh, but if you don't put in some effort on those bikes, um, you're not going to maintain your cardio. You can also swim too. Swimming is a great one. You know, mixing in some hypoxic swims, you know, skip breathing freestyle stuff, 50-50s, all, all real good for maintaining your conditioning. But anyway, that was an article and the description. In fact, let me uh, put a link to it in here because I uh, um, it's a it's a good one and, and it's going to be uh, needed here in the next few weeks because every year at this time here's what happens we're almost getting into spring I mean we're I mean we're in this this is our eighth week of this one so we have another five weeks before spring starts. And then when spring starts, it's going to be, you know, a progression with running every week. And it never fails. People who are not on a logical progression that are building up and just jump right into 20 or 25 miles in a week out of nowhere. Um, they usually are texting me or emailing me or, you know, instant messaging me. Uh, hey, I have shin splints. Well, no duh. It's because you just did too much too soon, too fast, and you hurt yourself. So be smart whenever you start running again, if you've laid off of running at all. Um, let's see. Um, so, yeah, this week, by the way, um, is our eighth week of our um program winter lift program which means every fourth week we do a, a cows and cardio week so today was uh, a leg day but we did it on a hill where we mixed in sprints and squats and lunges and fireman carries um and it was good Put, got some miles in a little bit more than normal but nothing too crazy i think we probably went five and a half today but a lot of leg pt um and we use it kind of as a deload from the lifting um, and as a maintenance for some of the cows and cardio that we need to maintain um, for PST type events that are occurring throughout our cycles. Um, and I find it very helpful. So um, let's see. First question. Looks like we got a few questions here. Um Nathaniel says, are you from, oh, sorry, my thing just went blank. Um, are you familiar with MOF running? I think MOF is uh, short for MOF tone. Is that right? Um, never heard it MOF running before. Uh, I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. Um, and how long did it take you to build your aerobic base? Oh, it's a formula. 24 years old, scared the time it will take to build aerobic base will prolong training longer. Well, here's the thing. You know, you don't have to do all your aerobic base with running. You know, unless you're a running athlete, I really don't recommend it. You know, some of the running suggestions that I hear given from running coaches to someone who's 240 pounds, been playing football for 10 years, are ridiculous. You know, that guy has no business running 
you know, 20, 30 miles a week and build an aerobic base of long, slow distance. You know, how about 10 miles a week and, you know, get most of your cardio from biking and swimming, you know, so treat it. I, what I do is I tend to treat non-running athletes like a triathlon program where two thirds of your cardio is going to be non-impact and one third is going to be running. And that's if you're not hurt. <clears throat> a lot of guys get hurt because they get into this long, slow distance for building aerobic base and they had no business doing it just because they're not a running athlete. So that's my tangent there. Apologize for that. Um, so let's see. Saw improvement doing your and Jeff's program. Um, but HR was too high and thought maybe I could have improved more. Follow you two for a while and crush everything else. Thanks to you two. Um, oh, well, good. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, you know, work on your conditioning. It doesn't have to be running. You know, a lot of this stuff transfers over. Um, you know, just bike hard, like I, all those bike workouts I just mentioned before we started, those are great ways to replace running if you are not able to have that kind of mileage each week. You know, think about every 30 minutes you're on a bike, that's four miles of running go with, you know, let's say, um, and, but you got to make that bike worthy. You know, it can't just be, you know, it doesn't have to be anaerobic, but you definitely want to get your heart rate up there, there a little bit, you know, to build that aerobic base. So it can still be conversational, but you still want to put in some work. <coughs> so listen to your body. You know, that's that's half of the the challenge. I think a lot of people just jump into running programs that they really aren't ready for, or for that matter, lifting programs or even swimming programs. You know, there's some swimming programs that have you doing building aerobic base with five to ten thousand yards of swimming. Well, someone who's not used to swimming is not gonna do that. And if they do, they're probably gonna have shoulder tendonitis from freestyle swimming and all kinds of problems. So yeah. Let's see what you got, Alex. One more week. When I one more week when I get to thank you. Thank you for existing <laughs> and doing a great job. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. In fact, I have some books to give away. So let's do some books. I have any law enforcement guys out there? Any law enforcement guys that want to do, uh, okay, I'm going to do a couple of them today. So I got a weight vest workout. This is a fun one. Basically how we use weight vests. It's a great spring, fall transition because a lot of times we, um, during the fall and spring, we transition into and out of weightlifting from calisthenics. And that's a way to, you know, slowly build yourself into weights by reducing your calisthenics with weight vests. And it's also a great way to, you know, drop the weights and start, you know, building up your repetitions over the spring and summer. So the weight vest workouts are really great for that spring fall transition in my seasonal tactical fitness periodization system. Um, so I'll give a weight vest workout away and I give a spring training. And if I have any law enforcement that are trying for SWAT, let me know because I've been cleaning out my office and I found one of my published books called the SWAT workout. This is a good one. I like this one. So, all right. So, you know, the drill, I will give away those books when you guys see, uh, when you guys see that pop up. Okay, not now. When you see that book giveaway pop up, just say, send it to me. First person who says, send it to me, gets uh, gets the book. All right? 
and we'll start here in the next couple of minutes. I don't have any videos to share, so we'll just do book giveaways today. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be back at 9 a.m. East Coast time, and we'll do some CSS videos. Got some good CSS videos over the week um, that are very common um, very common issues that people have. Top leg going backwards, calling the elementary side stroke the CSS. It's not the CSS. Um, let's see, Tristan. Record swim pace is 25-25. 25, 25, 25 and 25, 25 yards and 25 seconds. Okay. But with suboptimal technique. Can only you need to send me a video. Can only get in the pool two days a week. Is this enough? Hmm. <sighs> it might be, given the fact that you're running and biking the other six days of the week. Hmm. That's a tough one. Um, <sighs> swimming shape is different. You, you really do need to be swimming. But if that's all you got, let's see what you got. You know, you what I would suggest is, you know, your workouts in the pool should be focused on technique primarily and conditioning. And then you get your extra conditioning with running and biking. Maybe try some elliptical too, because you can get your arms in there too. It's a little closer. I personally prefer... If you really want to see progress in your swimming, four to five days a week. My PT says the lower leg pain I feel during running is due to poor hip and glute stability. Could be. Could be poor form. Could be bad shoes. But he's probably right. Do you have any experience with weak hips and glutes? I was able to do the SOS prep with mild leg discomfort. Um, everything I do in hips are primarily done on my mobility day, um, where I actually address some, not only hip strength and flexibility, but mobility of the actual joint itself, treading water, running in water, uh, doing all the dynamic stretches that you can think of in chest deep water. That's a great way to build the hips, but... I mean, you can build the hips with, you know, RDLs, uh, Bulgarian split squats, um, do some floor exercises where you're working those glutes, like donkey kicks and dirty dogs. Um, but yeah, that's where I would be. Um Good morning, sir. Thank you for all the great PT CSS material. CSS questions. When you do the bottom arm pull, is that arm straight as you pull, or do you pull all the way to the hip or stop sooner? Good question. A lot of people like to do this big sweeping pull, and what happens is it causes them to over-rotate. Next thing you know, they're looking up at the ceiling like this. Just a waste of rotation. Um, what I recommend is, Pull really hard with that top arm and you're turning with the top arm and you're breathing with the bottom arm. And that breathing with the bottom arm really can be more like a breaststroke. So top arm is a full pull and push like freestyle. Bottom arm is like a breaststroke. So it actually comes down, arm bent, and then comes back up with the recovery of the uh, top arm. <laughs> Some people are already saying send it to me. Good try, Leo. I haven't put the uh, the thing up there. So I'll let you have a choice, too, of uh, what program you want. Um, okay. What do you think of swimming CSS and camis in a 50-meter length pool? Should I use other strokes instead? Currently doing 120 per lap. In trunks. So one, you're doing a 120, 100, I assume. That's pretty good. 80 second hundred. That's really good. Um, 
I mean, if you need to swim in camis, then I would definitely practice swimming in camis. There is a recon test that requires um, you to do 500 meters in camis, and you can't do freestyle. You can do breaststroke. You can do side stroke. Has to be an underwater recovery stroke. Cannot do freestyle. Um, so those are the only two strokes you can use. So I typically prefer the elementary side stroke when I'm wearing camis. And if you don't know what the elementary side stroke is, you should, you should get it. You should check it out because, uh, go online, type in elementary side stroke and it is, is a stroke used by, you know, most swim coaches. So when a lot of times people confuse the elementary side stroke with the combat side stroke or the combat swimmer stroke, basically the combat swimmer stroke is a modified side stroke where it just adds bigger pulls where the elementary side stroke also allows you to keep your head out of the water the whole time if you want. And you can just, you can just breathe. And the fact that you're not getting a lot of glides anyway out of the camis, you know, might as well keep your face out of the water and just breathe when you need to breathe versus have it on a particular time and try to try to glide and not go anywhere and just actually lose momentum. So, yeah, that is what I would do there. Um, so let's see. Next question. Let me see. Who's going to be first with this? Anybody? Boom. Okay. All right. So it has been it has been decided. The book giveaway has been decided. Stand by. Let me make sure don't have anybody uh coming in late. <sighs> okay, looks like uh big by 935. Got it. Got the first one anyway. So big by 935, here's what I want you to do. You have a choice. Um, weight vest workout, spring training. It's almost spring, so it's a great transition into spring. Um, send me an email, stu at stusmith.com. In fact, I'll put it here so you can see it. Um, stu at stusmith.com. See that right there? That is my email. Send me an email. Tell me which book you want and your address, and I will get these shipped out today. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. Oh, I missed a question up here. West on 50. Let's see. Um Morning, Stu. 5'9", 155. My PST scores are above average, except for the run. I've been doing your winter lift program. Put on about eight pounds. Nice. Should I keep trying to bulk and reduce more running and swimming and reintroduce more running? Um, yeah, it depends on which running pro or which uh, winter lift program you're on. If you're on this one, every four weeks is a cows and cardio week. If you're on one of my first ones, which wouldn't you know it, I don't have a copy of it. Um, it's the blue and gold copy it says went fall and winter lift cycle. It's a 24 week cycle. Um, that one does not have the block periodization model in it. So my suggestion would be maybe every fourth week, add in a week of just cows and cardio. In fact, I'm going to send you a week that I, PST week challenge. In fact, if you have one of those um, uh, programs with uh, not the block periodization program, you can make your own and add in this article. This article right here is really good. In fact, it's got a picture of a week. You can just download it. 
and uh, it's got a PT pyramid. It's got lots of running interval stuff, squats, air squats type stuff. It's got super sets, it's got a max rep set. These things are really, this is a good week of training. This is the week that I have people do sometimes four weeks in a row and they just kill the, um, kill the PST with it. Let's see. But that's good you put on some mass. That's going to be helpful. I wouldn't get too much bigger given your height, um, but that's not bad. You ever seen anyone achieve 3K in 1030 or less? 3K. What is 3,000 meters? That would be another two laps, right? No. How many laps is that around the track? Six laps, seven, be 283,000. I have not, Sebastian, mainly because we don't deal in meters <laughs> when we run, typically. Um, that would be close to um, right at that two-mile mark. I think 3,200 meters is... Uh, Two miles, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, two five-minute miles is very doable. I haven't seen it personally. That's not my level of running. So Alex says he was in front of... Bigby, and I will tell you this, not on my, um, not on my, um, thing. I got Bigby coming in at 920, got you coming in at 922, but on my chart, my comment section, Bigby has it. So, I mean, I could, I guess I could share my screen and show you. Yes. Um, let's see. Morning, Stu. If you could go back in time and fit as many workouts in a day as you like, prepping for PFT and BUDS, how many would you do? Um, I mean, I I think I did it right doing what I did. Um, but we would do two to three workouts a day. And it was a busy day, too. I mean, I was going through school at the academy. I was playing rugby. So we'd get up in the morning and do some kind of PT and run. We would go to class the rest of the, you know, rest of the day. Sometimes we'd hit something at lunch. Rarely though, it wasn't more, it wasn't really that consistent. Um, and then uh, we do rugby practice for a couple hours in the afternoon. And then we'd hit a swim or lift in the evening and then study all night. Um, so yeah, I mean, we were busy. I mean, there were, there were 18 to 20 hour days, but you know, my, my thing is this, you don't need to do three workouts a day if you're on your feet all day working. Cause it's not like buds is constant fitness. You know, it's just you being busy all the time you're going to be on your feet taking care of boats and equipment and you got to go to class as well and then you have lunch you know so it's not all butt kicking physical fitness time you know so you don't need to work out for 10 hours straight right it's just a couple hours in the morning get another one in the evening but be on your feet all day be busy get working you just got to get used to the grind that's the hardest part Yeah, try try that one. You got the fall winter program. Try the uh, try adding in that article I I put in there. It works really well. So Alex says uh, he's a winner. Phone's reaching out. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. It happens. Um, we'll we'll do another one though. 
who can do this one? Anybody ready? Let me see the comment section. I have so far I have no comments in my comment section. We'll do another one. Let me see if uh Kids uh, emailed me what book he wants because I guess that does depend on how I'm, which one I'm giving away next. All right, so we got some send it to me's. Oh, Tom got one. Nice, Tom. Looks like Tom is up top. Tom Greasy. There you go. No relation to the Hall of Fame quarterback, evidently, which is a bummer. Um, so, yeah, Tom, which book you want? Let me see what ones I have that might be you might like. I do have... I got Cows and Cardio. I have... Tactical Fitness, Over 40. This is a beginner book. Tactical Fitness, Over 40. This is more advanced. Uh, but also, uh, Cows and Cardio is a good one, too. So, yeah, Tom got that one. Tom, email me, Stu, at Stu Smith, your address, and I will email you that, uh, that book. Look like... Spring Workout is the one uh, Bigby wanted. So we still have a, I'll give that one away. And then we have the weight vest, weight vest workout. So Tom, let me know which one you want. Cows and cardio. Cows and cardio for Tom. There we go. <laughs> oh yeah. Bob Greasy. Yeah. I don't know why I said Tom Greasy. Brains. I already have the over 40 books. Cool. Yeah, Cows and Cardio is a good one. It's a great one for the spring, too. And uh, there's a beginner, intermediate, and advanced program in it. So depending on where you are on that spectrum, you can start at either, any one. Intermediate's pretty good. Uh, the advanced one's tough. I mean, I've had people who were failing the PST do that advanced Cows and Cardio, and we're crushing the PST after that little cycle. So it's... Those aren't nothing, right? It does have a good beginner guide for it as well. And the intermediate's a nice little build up too. So oh, let's see. Sebastian says, ever been to Europe? Is there a European country you'd like to visit? I love Europe. Um, been to Spain, been to France, been to Italy, Germany, uh, Belgium, Austria. Yeah. I will have to say, I really enjoyed Italy. Never had a bad meal in Italy. And uh, in fact, my wife and I even honeymooned in Italy. So we liked it. <clears throat> How important is it to do the calisthenics in a circuit manner? Um, you know, good question. You know, it doesn't have to be in a circuit. I have just found that um, they are they're they're useful. You can get more done by resting with other activities. Um, I mean, a really simple way to do that would be to rest with some kind of core activity. You know, planking, uh, sit ups, flutter kicks. You know, whatever. You know, if you're doing pull ups, you know, rest with. Rest with abs, or if you're doing a lot of push-ups, you could do pull-ups and push-ups and rest with each other, right? You're working different muscle groups there, but you're never really resting the heart. Uh, another great one is to rest, literally rest with running. When you can do a couple of big exercises in a row, let's say pull-ups and push-ups, and then you can go do a quarter-mile run and come back ready to hit that next set, that is just a progression of your ability to recover uh, and do the next activity. So you're building up your overall work capacity by building up your muscle stamina, your strength endurance. Um, and that's, 
it's it's more of a progression is a better way to put it. You, I wouldn't necessarily put a lot of circuits into a beginner um, beginner program. I'd actually let them do some rest, literally resting, you know, and at the most maybe rest on a bicycle, you know, stationary bike for a couple of minutes before they do the next set. But eventually you're going to build up some muscle stamina where you don't need to rest like that. <clears throat> and you can actually do more of an active rest and just never stop moving. There's some workouts where we just never stop moving for 45 minutes to an hour. And that could be like a pull up on one side of this field. And then we jog over to the other side of the field and we do push ups. And we go back and forth, see if we can go up to level 20. You know, it's 210 pull ups and push ups. That's a good one. You know, get a bunch of, you know, get 20 hundred yard runs, hundred meter runs in between. No, that's, that's a great one. So yeah, good question. But it's more of a progression. Would you focus on running and cardio before weight training or afterwards? You know, that's a good question. Again, um, it really depends on what you need to focus on the most. Um if you're trying to improve your lifting, I would definitely not run before lifting. If you're trying to improve your running, there are times when you could do it either way. Now, if you're trying to improve your running, you want to run first. But if your running is at the end of a calisthenics or lifting uh, circuit or test in your PT test, like the army fitness test. They have to run a two mile run after doing, you know, kettlebell runs and power ball throws and medicine ball power throws and deadlifts, uh, and planking. Right. So they, they should probably run at the end just to get used to that transition of lifting and doing calisthenics first and then running on the back end. So it really kind of depends on why you're doing both. Um, if you're doing both for a fitness test, I would put it in the order of the fitness test. If you're doing both just to be good at both, it really depends on which one you're trying to improve and which one you're trying to maintain, because the one you're trying to improve will be better first. The one you're trying to maintain will be a second. Typically. Is it safe to do pull-ups and squats daily? I would not do that. Um, I would not do any calisthenic, high-volume calisthenic. Now, I will say this. If you're doing 10 pull-ups and 20 squats every day, not a big deal. That's like just motion is lotion and kicking off the rust. Um, more of a warm up, but if you're doing a hundred pull ups and 300 squats every day, way too much. That volume requires some recovery, unless you want to start seeing tendonitis or negative results will tend to happen as well. What do you know about FBI HRT? And do you have any information about it on your website? I do not. I do have a, see that picture right here, right here. That is from one of our guys that is HRT member. Um, it was a gift. By the way, most of these things behind me are gifts from students. So that's an FBI gift there. That's a uh, guy went to Bud's, gave us this one. Well, Heroes of Tomorrow. Uh, this right here is a Christmas present from some of my guys. Uh Got some other stuff. Secret Service up here. That's my bud's graduation. These are my college graduations. Uh, the paddles are gifts. These are gifts from students. This is my paddle over here. Um, but what do I know about HRT? Um, well, first of all, you need to be an agent. If you're not an agent, let's don't even have this discussion. Um, if you are an FBI agent, send me an email. I can send you some stuff, but until you're an FBI agent, um, I'm not even going to bother answering this. That's like saying 
you want to be a sniper and you haven't even been through budget. Yeah. I'm not saying that's you, just comparing it. <sighs> Did I post that again, Alex, or are you just late? What if I did two sets of pull-ups and squats to failure every day? I wouldn't do it. Did I do that? Book giveaway? If I did, I didn't mean to, but we'll just go ahead and honor it. Which one do you want, Alex? You're the winner. <laughs> I didn't even know that was up there. I guess, I guess it was hiding behind my, my other comments. All right, so we just did a book giveaway. Alex won it. So I'll give it to you, Alex. Let me know what you want. I do have the weight vest workout available, but I have some others as well, too. You tell me which one you want. I'll send it to you. Yeah, Alex got that one. He won't mess around. It's hard to do this on a phone, I imagine. Now, I wrote a book, uh, wrote an article called Stop Doing Daily Push-Ups. Let me see. Stop Doing Daily Pull-Ups, Push-Ups. Stu Smith. Um, so, there's a bunch of reasons why, but I put this right here. So this is an article I wrote on why you shouldn't do daily stuff like that. Typically, here's what happens. You do daily stuff to the level that you're talking about. And if that volume's really starting to get high, um, it's counterproductive. Now, you may see some pretty good growth in about a week, maybe two. But anywhere after that, after a month, you're going to start feeling elbow pain, knee pain, shoulder pain depending on what exercise you're doing every day, you're going to see some negative results, probably get to a point where you can't. Um... Now, Alex, you're good. It was up there. I just didn't, uh, I think I was hiding it with a, with a comment and, uh, and then I reduced the comment and it popped up and you and like four other people were on it. You just happened to be first. <clears throat> so there you go. Good stuff. Now, am I, you, you want this one? The weight vest workout or you want something else? Nice work. Nice work. So we got any other questions? So uh, if we don't have any other questions, I'm writing an article right now. In fact, I'm almost done with it and it's called use it or lose it. And it's really for, it's really, I guess, geared more towards people who are, um, is it safe to run every day? Let me answer that question. <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, I don't. I probably run five to six days a week. So I usually take a day off or two a week from running. I don't know why you're fascinated with doing something every day. Just ver be a little more um, diverse in your training. Don't do the same old stuff every day. You're just going to get injuries in those same old joints that you're working. Change it up. You can do something every day if you want, but you just got to be smart. Have you ever heard of the term split routine? Figure out a good split routine. Maybe do a push-pull leg or upper body, lower body. <clears throat> Come on, man. Physiology 101 is what I'd recommend you um, reading about. Split routines will give you some ideas on how to actually make a program if you're worried about making your own program. <clears throat> um. Tristan, did your question come through? I, if it did, I missed it. Oh, here we go. Is there really a PED problem in buds? It seems like there 
would be no point as I think the instructors are going to push you to muscle failure, even if you can do more reps than your peers. Um, I would say there probably was some use of PEDs in buds. I wouldn't say it is uh, pervasive or out of control, um, but they're now testing for it and actually kicking people out for high testosterone. So it should definitely dampen people's thought process of saying they need PEDs because you don't. So, and it's really more about recovery than it is who can do the most reps, you know, because it, it's a grind. But once again, not needed. You know, if you can just go eat and hydrate and get some sleep on the weekends, you don't need PEDs. <clears throat> But I did write an article on it. In fact, um, new test at Bud's Stu Smith. Check out this article. This will tell you some facts about it. How I understand them. Um, let's see. Weight vest book. Okay, so you get the weight vest book, Alex. Um, so I was talking about, um, talking about use it or lose it. And it's really just, here, here's some terms about it. Um, you know, use it or lose it. Another phrase, motion is lotion. Just keep moving, you know, be consistent hypertrophy or atrophy that's another one i've heard over the years where you're either going to lift or you're going to not lift you're going to be building or maintaining muscle or you're going to be losing muscle um so anyway it's it's kind of a interesting topic more geared towards people who are um getting older and getting out of the habit of fitness and next thing you know they're 50 pounds overweight and they're 55 years old and now it's harder to lose so that is um that's what we're trying to avoid that scenario because if you just keep moving you won't have those issues don't have to be a crazy stud workout for two hours you just walk every day and don't overeat Use it or lose it. And that can go through, you know, mentally as well. You know, read more. You know, you're going to lose it if you don't use it. So anyway, working on that one. A little bit different topic than what I normally discuss on this channel. But fitness is uh, for all of us. And eventually, all you young guys are going to be old and you're going to say, Ooh, I should have listened to Stu on that mobility day. Might need to start picking that thing up a little more often. Somebody asked about horse stance for mobility exercise. Sure. I think some of those are great, you know, especially, uh, you know, any of the martial arts you know, are, are great for that. Who? let's see. All right, folks. So we're giving away three books today. I appreciate you guys being on. Um, tomorrow I'll be back on. We'll do some videos. Probably give away a couple more books. I just got a bunch of extra books that are laying around, so I'm just going to give them away. Um, maybe I'll give somebody uh, one of the Spec Ops books. So my Spec Ops options next time. So the, these are the, these are the big four. You got the Navy SEAL. EOD Diver, you got uh, Marine Recon, Marsoc, you got Air Force Special Warfare, all of it, IFT, OFT, Prep, and you got Army Ranger SF. Um, those are some of my favorites, and I, I enjoy using those. I enjoy getting feedback from people who are doing them and getting tabbed, getting, you know, getting their beret, getting... You know, their trident is just just exciting to be a part of that journey. So 
Let's see. If you are running and swimming and fitting lifting in, to what order is optimal and what recommendations for recovery in between? Um, yeah, most of my workouts in what I just showed you, those programs have running or rucking and both swimming and lifting slash calisthenics in there. Sometimes it's mixed. Sometimes I mix calisthenics with swimming. Sometimes I mix calisthenics with lifting. You can also mix running with lifting too. Um, but most often we will lift or do the calisthenics first. Um, maybe warm up with a short type of run and then uh, make the runs harder after and then go swimming after that. That is my typical plan. Now, that is my plan because that's the way it's set up in my pool. Right? I wake up, we work out at six, pool's not available. If it was available, I'd probably swim first. I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't. Um, but I personally like to swim last just because I'm all sweaty and nasty. I can go clean clean off in the shower, do my swim workout, change. I'm done for the day, ready to go. Um, so anyway, that's how I do it. It doesn't have anything to do necessarily with the order of optim optimizing my performance in any of them. It literally has more to do with my schedule. So you know, these things are little segments in my columns of workouts. And if you need to move the ruck to the beginning, because that's the only time you can do it, and you need to move the lift to the evening at the bottom of the column, because that's the only time you can do it. So gym's open then. Sometimes that's the way you got to do it. And sometimes it really doesn't matter. Just get it done. You know, you get, you have a day to do it, get it done in that day. But if you were here earlier, I talked also about the order of exercises in your fitness test that's going to qualify you for some of these professions. I would seriously consider that as well. There, there was a time when I would swim first, do all my calisthenics, and I'd run last. Because PST, which really mattered, because we took it once, and if you didn't do well on it and you weren't competitive on it, you were done. Um, you take, you know, you do your swim workouts first, get used to swimming as your warm up, do your calisthenics, burn it out hard, and then be able to run immediately after that. That's that's how I structured my training before I went into buds, at least a year before I went into buds. And then I'd do something else. And usually what I would do in the after the test type training is I would I would do a test every other week or so. And after that test, I would focus on a weakness. So if I did particularly bad on the run, I would do four, maybe, you know, six more quarter mile runs at goal pace. You know, if I did bad on the swim, I'd go do, you know, some swim workouts. I didn't have the 50-50 back then because I didn't invent it yet. Um but that's what I would do. I'd probably go do the 50-50 workout now. You know, and if I needed to work on my calisthenics, I'd go do a pyramid or superset type thing. Or maybe like a Murph, you know, 100, 200, 300, and as few sets as possible. Um, good questions today, though. So, you guys, if you won books, just uh, remind me. Send me your address. And I will get these out to you today. Um, we'll do some more book giveaways tomorrow. Um, you guys uh, slap that like button up there. Slap it. Whoosh. This thing runs on likes. <laughs> All right, man. I will see you guys later. Um, check out stewsmithfitness.com if you're looking for more programming. Uh, also on that website, there's articles, um, tons of articles on there about different topics. You can use the search if it's you're looking for something. Um, also, I've been playing around with YouTube shorts. So check out this YouTube channel um, and check out the shorts section. And I'm posting a lot of new um, combat swimmer stroke videos that I had posted on TikTok. I'm going to put them up on uh, YouTube shorts since some people don't like TikTok. So we'll see how that works.
All right, guys, until tomorrow, we will see you later. Have a good one.